Hey everybody, this is Jeff from Junior Hockey Advisor. I want to take a little time to show you a little bit behind the scenes how things are done and how we get to certain uh, uh, information. Uh, this has been a question that's come up several times over the last few weeks, a uh, couple months. You know, like, hey, you've got a lot of information. Where are you getting it from? How are you doing? It's not hard. Uh, it's time consuming and it takes a little bit of time to do this. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen with you and I'm going to show you a little bit about... Uh, how I do things. So this is the screen share. Let's get this up. All right, that's my screen. This is my my big monitor in front of me. And on the big monitor, I have two things. I have a spreadsheet on my left, uh, your left as you're looking at the screen. And then on the right, I have elite prospects. So what I do is I take the draft from the elite prospects and, okay, so what I do is I grab the drafts. Now I have the premium version. I spend, you know, a few bucks a month on uh, on the process. I'm not sure what it is, six, eight, ten bucks a month uh, to get a little bit more information. But on the draft, you can see right away. I can pull up the draft and it's got all the different drafts. I can go right down to the NAHL uh, entry draft right there. Bingo! It'll pull up 2020 for me. Uh, it's default setting on the drafts is for the, the NHL. So remember, uh, Elite Prospects has two, for, uh, two different purposes. Uh, you've got a lot of people that use this information because they, they use it for their fantasy leagues and their fantasy games. Uh, then you've got people that actually use it for scouting, recruiting, uh, and, and drafting players for legitimate leagues. So, um, so I pull up 2020. This is the NHL draft. Now, there's my list. There's my list across the board. There's all the rounds. You can see as the rounds go on, I'm in the 11th round right there. About 50% of the teams you get in are, are, are done. You get into round 12, you can see there's only three, four, five, six, seven kids picked in that round. There's round 13, the number gets a little less. Round 14, we're down to three players. Round 15, we're down to one player. New Jersey's still going. And then uh, 16 and 17, it's still New Jersey. So New Jersey picked through the 17th round. Uh, that's, th that's the max right there. Now, remember how that works. Uh, because of the supplemental draft, the team start out with a baseline number of 28. They take their protected veterans, the players that they want to protect that are veteran players. Let's say they have 10. Then they take their tenders that they signed. That number could be whatever. It could be one up to ten, between one and ten. It could be zero to ten. Most play, most teams take advantage of their tenders, though. That's a commitment that, uh, that says if this player is going to play in the league, they're going to play for us. And the player is saying the same thing. If I play in the North American Hockey League, I'm going to play for you. So it's protected on both ends there. Now, you've got ten protected players. You've got ten of your pro uh, prospects that are tendered. You have 20 total. That 28 baseline number minus 10 and 10, you're left, left with eight players. Now that you have a number of eight, that's how many rounds you participate in. So some of these teams that, you know, as you go back up here and you see the, the first couple rounds when, when teams are begging out, I mean, we're in the seventh round and there's, there's a lot of teams already with no selections made because they, they don't have room. They've got protected players and they've got their tenders. So uh, let's see where the first team to bow out. The first team to bow out on the draft in the fourth round was the Mediteros. So they only had to pick up four players. That means their, their veteran list of protected veterans and their tenders equal 24. Uh, that's not a bad situation to be in. That means you've got a lot of veterans coming back. And uh, we can look at, uh, look at the Mediteros roster. And we'll just do this for fun. This isn't part of what I was going to show you. Uh, you should see a lot, very little 99s. So uh, you're looking at the list across the board. You only have one, two, three, four, five. You only have five 99s on the roster. So that works out pretty much the way we said it was going to work out because we looked at them and they bowed out in round five. Okay, so now what I do to get my spreadsheet started is I take this full draft and I take and I just cut and paste. I take the whole draft, I start over here, and I literally cut and paste the whole draft. Once I've taken that and I paste it, this is, this is already pasted on, then I start filling out information. Because you see over here, 
I, I get some information. I get their overall pick number, I get their team, and I get the player. That's not really enough information for me to work on. What I want is I want a full picture. I want to look at efficiency of the draft from the, the whole North American Hockey League. I want to know overall, did this league do a good job and the selection process from the first pick to the last pick? Then I want to look at each team and how effective, or excuse me, how efficient they were on their draft picks. In other words, uh, if they had five picks, how many of those five picks actually stayed on the team, actually were productive members of that team? If they had 10 picks, how many? Now remember, and we've talked about this in prior videos, last year, half of the teams had two or less, and you had uh, teams with one or less uh, players uh, that were drafted. So there are teams that have a very, very low uh, effective rate as far as the way they go about this process. So as I look at this, I, then I want to look at the next part, which is what kind of production did that player uh, have during the league? Now, over a period of time, you can build a case that through your drafts, you need to execute X amount of effectiveness and efficiency. So how many players actually made my roster and stay on the team? And how many point production, how many points do I get out of production of those players? And for goalies, you know, what kind of save percentage am I getting or, or uh, you know, goals against average, whatever metrics I'm using there. But overall, I can I take this information and I can start building a picture. This doesn't happen until after the roster is actually finalized. Then there's another phase after the, uh, the uh, rosters are locked in the spring. And then we look at the end of the year too and we can look back at the year and kind of build a history off of this. So this is just the first process in the first part of the year. So just doing this takes a few hours getting this cut because then I gotta come back over and I've gotta add in my, my actual information, my columns. I wanna know the team they came from. I wanna know the league they came from. I wanna know their date of birth and height. Now, it's not important for me to know anything about, I should show you this screen while I'm talking about it because it doesn't do you any good to hear me talking about it and looking down at it unless you're actually uh, sharing the screen with me. So this is the screen I'm talking about right now. Uh, once again, I'll cover the, uh, let me get over here. These are the, the columns I add. The team they're playing for, the league they're playing for, their date of birth and their height. Now I don't do weight because the standard deviation uh, for a 5'9 player or a 5'11 or a 6'2 player, uh, I would put it in the notes if it's extraordinary. Like if there's a 5'11 guy that's going 225, I'll put that in as an extraordinary note. But you know the standard deviation, in other words, you know the plus minus on a player at 5'11 or 6'2, you know a 6'0, 6 6'1, 6 you know you're going to see anybody from 175 to 200, and that's not uncommon. There's nothing that's you know sending off alarm bells. But a 6'0, 6 6 kid, you know that's packing in 250 pounds, I'm going to put that note down. Or if there's a 6'1 kid that's packing 135 pounds, I'm going to put that in the notes too. But I don't need the weights for the rest, <clears throat> only the extraordinary information. Then what college they're commitment, committed to. And then this is the notes column on the end. This just tells me some certain things that are, um, you know, did not attend main camp, uh, slated to start college in the fall. Uh, those are the type of notes or signed with a BCHL team. So then once I got my, how do I get this? I guess that's the question. So I transferred this right off of Elite Prospects. This is the, the overall number in the draft. This is the team, this is the player. So how do I get this information and what's the fastest way? Okay, so let's just start off at the top. First overall pick, Wichita, the new team coming in. They picked Thomas Weiss, Thomas Weiss. All right, so if I just double click on him, look what happens to my Elite Prospects screen. My Elite Prospects screen, screen pulls him right up. Uh, just by clicking on his name. So now I've got all of inf his information. I can get his birth year. I can get his height right there. Oh, just, I always look at these to see. It says his brother Vincent is uh, a player, too, he's connected to. His brother's in the USHL, too, uh, playing for the Madison Capitals. Good to know because that might have an influence on Thomas uh, since he is coming off of Team Wisconsin and he's already slated, or excuse me, already played 38 games uh, for Madison. And his brother's there. Uh, that's going to be an interesting situation. This tells you where I get my information on him. 
So I know that he's coming from the Madison Capitals. I know that he's an 02. I know that he's 5'9". Now, as the year goes on, I might build out goals and assists. I might, you know, from last year, I might even give you goals and assists from, uh, from the uh, current year. Uh, but right now, I don't need that. I could actually build that in live where it dumps right in and keeps me up to date. So I go through each one of these players. Once again, if I double click on the name, it pops up over on my Elite Prospect screen. I can now gather all the information here, put it over on my spreadsheet here. Now, I've only done the first two rounds here. You can see that I stopped at 54. I get to 54 right there. So what are some things I can glean right off of this list right away? Uh, I can tell you right away, uh, I know how many in the first two rounds. I can tell you there's 12 2000s. There is uh, 1801s and 1702s. We know that's usually normal. Uh, you'll see the uh, the kids with uh, this year and one year and, uh, after, or this year and two years after, they're usually you know the highest numbers. Um, the age out kids are the third highest number. Then you see very few kids at the 03 and 04 level. That's your kids that are coming in at 16 and 17. This is an old league. That's the way the North American Hockey League is. In the first 54 picks, only five Canadians and one European were, were picked. The other numbers you can see is you can see nine and nine were Americans from the BCHL. The Americans in the USHL, six out of seven of the uh, USHL picks were American. So pulling up the BCHL, yeah, there's a map. It's kind of nice when you hit the, the BCHL. You get all the teams. Now you get all the, the, the last year's um, information. Now I don't want last year. This, I don't want 1920. I want 2021. So I'm going to click on 2021. Then I'm going to go down here to the player stats, and I'm going to say show more. And then up here, this gives me – now remember, I'm in, a, I'm in the higher version of this than, um, than the, the average version. I, the, this is the premium package, 9 bucks or whatever it is a month. Um, but now I can see – how many players are they've got 199 players in the system already for the league and now i can go up here and i can just sort this real quickly uh by nationality i can go up here and say and right there it tells me 71 of these players are american so if i hit that button and apply the filter it'll pull up all 71 of those players for me you can see 68 d and forward three goalies down here it tells me who they are it tells me what team they're on so it's not a lot of information but it what it tells you is there's 71 players and the north american hockey league for whatever reason only took a chance on nine of these players so i'd like to i'd like to know a little bit more about that and hopefully over the, the course of the season with some conversations uh with 71 americans already signed up there uh unless the kid's in his third year Unless the kid's an NHL draft pick that's, you know, set and doesn't need to move, you know, why did they not take more? Remember, uh, some of these kids were already taken because the supplemental draft was earlier, and, and I'll, I'll put those two together, and we'll actually juxtapose those two lists, combine those two lists, do both uh, at separate times. We'll shake them both out. We'll figure out if, uh, if maybe that number is significantly higher than the 71 that we can already see in the league now. Nice little tool. Nice place to start. Build your spreadsheet out on the side. Use a split screen. You can do a lot of work uh, and get a lot of stuff done. Overall, to build this out, this will take me three or four days total. And then I really can't do much with it after I glean, you know, okay, I can glean where, you know, the origins of where the players played. I can tell you their ages. I can tell you if they're Canadians or Americans. Uh, I can tell you, you know, what specific team they played for. But then, the effectiveness and the efficiency of the draft, those numbers don't come in till later after the, the final 23 are, are picked because then I can start looking at how many of the draft picks actually made the team. How good, how effective is this team at utilizing their drafts? Um, how, how good are they at getting these players to stick in the league? How good is the North American Hockey League overall at making this work? And then we can get into – the efficiency side, which is what we just talked about, and the effectiveness. How do these players play? The drafted players versus tenders versus veterans, and we can start doing some analysis on that too. Uh, we can do this in all the leagues that have a draft. You don't even have to have a draft to do this work, but this is how it starts. This is where it comes from. thought I'd throw this together for you. I hope you enjoyed this information. I hope this helped you a little bit, and we'll see you on 
the next version on Sunday night.